This is the Orosnik missile, a state-of-the-art weapon system launched from a massive 12x12 truck platform. It has been meticulously engineered with multiple stages, enabling it to reach orbit in a few minutes. But what sets it apart from all the rest? Well, this missile can hit hypersonic speed. Once it reaches this altitude, it transitions into a steep dive, accelerating to hypersonic speeds during its descent. The missile's fairing opens to unveil six highly sophisticated warheads. Each warhead is equipped with miniature thrusters at its base. These thrusters enable the warheads to maneuver dynamically, even as they fall under the influence of gravity. It can change directions, making it almost impossible for the Patriot missile to hit its target. All in the video ahead, the missile design incorporates three distinct stages. The first stage consists of mobile thrusters which help move the missile, and it is filled with solid fuel. Just above it is the second stage, followed by the third and final stage, which holds six warheads, each with their own engine. This design enables the missile to deliver a powerful payload over long distances with remarkable precision. Weighing up to 50 tons at launch and carrying the warhead payload of 1.3 tons, the Oresnik missile has a range of 4,000 to 6,000 kilometers. This is capable of hitting all over Europe. What's particularly fascinating is that this missile is equipped with a sophisticated MIRV, multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicle system, capable of deploying approximately six warheads. These six re-entry vehicles are reportedly based on American designs, although much of the technical information remains classified. Here is what we know so far. The missile itself is launched from a self-propelled platform equipped with a 12 by 12 wheel configuration, allowing for significant mobility. The TEL, Transport Erector Launcher System, supports a cold launch method. Let's take a look at what is a cold launch system. A cold launch is a type of missile that is ejected from its launch tube or canister using an initial burst of compressed gas or a small explosive charge before its main rocket engine ignites. This launch method contrasts with hot launch systems like the THAAD or Patriot, where the missile's main engine fires while it is still inside the launch tube or canister. This cold launch technique reduces wear on the launcher and minimizes the risk of launch site detection. In addition, the TL is equipped with advanced hydraulics for stabilization and precise alignment of the missile before launch, ensuring accurate trajectory initiation. The system also integrates secure communications and command links with Russia's strategic rocket forces, enabling coordinated fire missions. At the front of the re-entry vehicle is the fuse and the nose, which are critical for its aerodynamic performance and functional operation. Directly behind the nose is the contact sensor, along with the arming and fusing system. This system ensures the warhead is armed and ready to detonate at the correct moment upon reaching its target. Moving further back, we find the warhead compartment. This section can house a nuclear warhead, making the vehicle a potential tool for strategic deterrence or offence, depending on its intended use. One of the critical features of this re-entry vehicle is its ability to manoeuvre and change direction while travelling at extremely high speeds. To achieve this, the vehicle is equipped with two spin nozzles located at specific points on its structure and a spin gas generator, which provides the propulsion necessary for such precise movements. Finally, the guidance system plays a vital role in ensuring the vehicle reaches its intended target. This is facilitated by a GLONASS antenna, which utilizes satellite navigation technology to guide the vehicle accurately to its destination. Let's take a look at how it works. The missile begins its flight by firing its first stage boost motor, propelling it out of the silo. Roughly 60 seconds into the flight, the first stage separates, and the second stage motor ignites while the protective missile shroud is jettisoned. About 180 seconds after launch, the thruster ceases, and the post-boost vehicle, also known as the bus, detaches from the rocket. The post-boost vehicle manoeuvres into position, preparing to deploy the re-entry vehicles. As the bus moves away, it releases the re-entry vehicles. Because the last stage had travelled at a very high parabolic path, the re-entry vehicles will fall at hypersonic speed of around Mach 11. These multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicles use these rotating thrusters to target the vehicles towards their target.
Finally, the nuclear warheads detonate either as air bursts or ground bursts, depending on the target mission requirements. What's so special about this ICBM? Speed plays a pivotal role in the effectiveness of missiles. The faster a missile travels, the quicker it can reach its target. After launch, the missile ascends into the upper atmosphere, where it travels at high altitudes before descending sharply toward its target. In high-stakes scenarios, even a few seconds can make the difference between a successful interception and catastrophic damage. If we move to a longer shot, this is how it travels. Ballistic missiles, in particular, operate by following a characteristic parabolic trajectory. As the missile re-enters the lower atmosphere, it can accelerate significantly, gaining immense kinetic energy. This energy is not merely a measure of its destructive potential upon impact, but also enhances its ability to maneuver mid-flight. Such maneuverability enables the re-entry vehicle to perform evasive actions, often likened to a defensive weave, to outmaneuver interception attempts. This agility poses a formidable challenge for advanced defense systems such as Ukraine's US-built Patriot missile, which are designed to detect, track and neutralize incoming threats. At a particular speed, the Patriot will not be able to calculate and hit a missile moving in zigzag directions at hypersonic speed. In short, defense systems must not only react faster, but also anticipate and counter unpredictable movements in real time. This is why this missile is special for the Russian forces. To give you a better idea, let's compare the Iskander with this intercontinental ballistic missile, or ICBM, by examining their trajectories, speed, range, and intended uses. The Iskander missile follows a quasi-ballistic trajectory, blending characteristics of both ballistic and cruise missiles. Unlike a traditional ballistic missile, the Iskander can maneuver mid-flight, unpredictably altering its path to evade missile defense systems. Additionally, it travels at much lower altitudes, which further complicates interception by conventional defenses. In contrast, ballistic missiles follow a high parabolic trajectory that consists of three distinct phases. In the boost phase, the missile powers its ascent. During the mid-course phase, it travels through space in a largely unpowered, gravity-influenced path. And in the terminal phase, it re-enters the atmosphere, descending rapidly toward its target. When comparing speeds, both ballistic missiles and the Iskander can achieve hypersonic velocities. Traditional ballistic missiles typically exceed Mach 5, but the Oresnik ICBM, Putin says, can hit Mach 11 during the re-entry phase, making them difficult to intercept. The Iskander missile is similarly capable of reaching hypersonic speeds, ranging between Mach 5 and Mach 7. The range of these missiles is another key distinction. Intercontinental ballistic missiles, ICBMs, are designed for extreme distances, exceeding 5,500 kilometers, which is about 3,417 miles, making them ideal for global strategic strikes. On the other hand, the Iskander missile is a short-range ballistic missile with a range of 500 to 700 kilometers, which is around 310 to 434 miles. This keeps it firmly within the short-range category and aligns it more closely with battlefield-level operations. Finally, the intended purpose of these missiles highlights their fundamental differences. Ballistic missiles, particularly ICBMs, are strategic weapons designed for long-range, high-impact scenarios. They're often used as a deterrent or for targeting critical infrastructure in a global conflict. In contrast, the Iskander missile is a tactical system optimized for battlefield use. It is specifically designed to strike enemy air defenses, command centers, and other key installations in localized conflicts, making it a versatile and precise tool in regional engagements. As an engineering channel, we also made the secrets behind this stealth bomber, so check this out and do subscribe to not miss a beat. Settings, don't add any subtitle. Don't use iStock. Now let's delve into the fascinating world of multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicles, or MIRVs. These advanced systems allow a single missile to carry multiple warheads, each capable of striking different targets. This technology significantly enhances the strategic capabilities of a nation's missile arsenal. By deploying MIRVs, a single launch can cover a wide array of targets, making it a formidable tool in modern warfare. Moving on, we come to the launch platform and the cold launch system. 
The launch platform is the structure from which missiles are fired and it plays a crucial role in the success of any missile operation. The cold launch system, on the other hand, is a method where the missile is ejected from its launch container before its main engine ignites. This technique reduces the wear and tear on the launch platform and enhances the missile's reliability. It's a, a sophisticated process that ensures the missile is safely and effectively deployed. Finally, we explore the components of a re-entry vehicle. The re-entry vehicle is the part of the missile that re-enters the Earth's atmosphere and delivers the warhead to its target. Key components include the heat shield, which protects the vehicle from the intense heat generated during re-entry, and the guidance system, which ensures the warhead hits its intended target with pinpoint accuracy. These components work in unison to make sure the mission is accomplished successfully. Now, let's delve into the heart of navigation technology, the guidance system and GLONASS. You see, these systems are the backbone of precision and accuracy in modern warfare. GLONASS, short for Global Navigation Satellite System, is Russia's answer to GPS. It provides real-time positioning and timing data for military and civilian users alike. But what makes GLONASS truly unique is its ability to function independently of other global navigation systems, offering a strategic advantage. The guidance system, on the other hand, ensures that missiles and other projectiles hit their intended targets with pinpoint accuracy. By integrating advanced algorithms and real-time data, it minimizes errors and maximizes effectiveness. Together, the Guidance System and GLONASS represent a leap forward in military technology, underscoring the importance of precision in the modern battlefield. The missile's flight sequence is a marvel of modern engineering. From launch to impact, every second is meticulously planned and executed. As it ascends, the missile reaches incredible altitudes before adjusting its trajectory towards the target. The precision of these maneuvers is what makes this technology so formidable. Speed and maneuverability are critical factors in missile design. This missile can reach speeds of several times the speed of sound, making it almost impossible to intercept. Its agility allows it to evade defense systems with ease, ensuring it reaches its intended target with pinpoint accuracy. When compared to the Iskander missile, this new technology shows significant improvements. The Iskander is known for its precision and power, but the advancements in this missile make it faster, more agile, and even more accurate. These enhancements provide a substantial edge in modern warfare. As we've seen, the advancements in missile technology are truly remarkable. These innovations not only enhance our defensive capabilities, but also ensure that we stay ahead in the ever-evolving landscape of military technology. Stay informed, stay prepared, and always be ready for what the future holds.